commanded the unjust steward. Look at that word. Are you here? Hey, young man, where are you going to? Come here, sit down there. Look at that scripture. It says, And the Lord commanded, He commanded the unjust steward. Why? Because He has done what? Wisely. For the children of this world are in their own generation wiser than the children of light. What an irony. That the people who are not the light are seen brighter, living better, bigger than those who have light. See that. And look at what the master did. The Bible said, the person he commended, he said, he's an unjust. Everybody say unjust. That means he is a bribe taker. That means he's a liar. That means he is somebody that is stealing his orgasm money. That means he's a, he's, a, he's a dribbler. He's a player. Am I talking, friend? Everything unjust, that's what he is. But God commended him. Why? You know, some time ago, one great man of one great man, they call Arthur Eze, a billionaire, happened to have so many boys that steal from him. They were stealing his money, and there were those who were catching those who were stealing money. And those who are catching those who are stealing money are also stealing money. But the thing is that those they are catching are smarter than them. One is wiser than all of them. Another one came. A massive mansion at New Haven, Chima Avenue, off Chima Avenue. So, one of the boys went there. One of his men went there. That time, that one was all a servant, but now he's a billionaire. He went there and saw the side to come and see. Come and see what this man that you call your BA is doing with your money. He built a marble house. Marble everywhere, marble everywhere. So he said, let us go and see the house. They went there. They said, bring the police. We are arresting. When they came there, the guy organized policemen here and there to come and arrest this man. We're not to enter. The ah, even have borehole. Ah, he asked Mabu. He said, but this boy, they have not finished this. I said, he said, call him here. How much are you going to use to finish the money again? He told him. He gave him five million to finish. His master commended an unjust steward. Am I saying you should be unjust? No. But he said, listen to me, friends. I read a scripture where the Bible says, Jesus said to his servants, He said, worry not for tomorrow. Think not about tomorrow. Bother yourself about tomorrow. Then you need to ask yourself a question. Why should I not worry about tomorrow? There must be something Jesus know that we don't know. Am I telling you, friend? There must be something that Jesus needs to reveal to us why we should not be worried about tomorrow. Why we should not disturb our soul. Why we not think about school fees of our children. Why we should not be worried about anything at all. What is it that Jesus Christ know that we don't know? I want to show you the reason why 90% of poor people on earth are born again tongue talkers speaking in tongues everywhere holy people righteous people spotless people, clean people they are the poorest in the society poorest in politics poorest in business poorest in the academic world not because that is how God wanted to be you know why? their pastors is always doing memorial service what was the memorial service? how? Because every day our pastors are talking about the death of Christ. That's memorial service. How he died on the cross. He died on the cross with a broken heart. He, we know he died as a broken heart. That is not what Jesus Christ came to do. Jesus never came to preach about his death. He never came. Tell your neighbor. Jesus never preached about his death. Tell your neighbor that. 
He didn't come to talk about debt. So why are we always talking about debt? Debt, debt on the pulpit every day. Celebrating the death of Christ. If you say how they flogged Jesus Christ, if you say how they matched Jesus Christ, he died on the cross with a broken heart. Is that what God told you to come and preach? No. The reason why the church is not rising is because we're doing memorial service. And we don't want to live a resurrected life. We don't want to come out and live a resurrected life. Look at it as a neighbor. Enough of memorial services in church. From now henceforth, I will start to live a resurrection life. What Jesus came to do? She said, Thy king, what Jesus came to do is to build gospel of the kingdom. It was the gospel of the kingdom. He said, For this fourth was I said. Now he began a prayer. How many of you remember where the prayer was prayed? Our Lord's prayer. What was the prayer? Our giving. Who at where? Hallow thy. Uh, let it be done as it is done where? What, how is it done in heaven? How is it done in heaven? Are they singing death in heaven? Are they singing sorrow in heaven? What Jesus is bringing down on earth, what he brought on earth is called good news, gospel of power. There was a gospel of power. Ladies and gentlemen, prophesy that heaven will be your neighbor. That heaven will come near your dwelling place. Because he said, thy kingdom come. Let it be done on earth as it is done in heaven. In heaven, in heaven, on earth, Christians are condemning gold. In heaven, they are using it for asphalt. Doing things with power. No memorial service. What is going to bring down is as it is heaven. Because in that heaven, there's no sickness, there's no thief, there's no joblessness, there's no weakling in that place, there's nobody that is murmuring, there's nobody that is complaining, there's no backbiting in heaven. There's nothing like blackmail in heaven. When somebody wanted to try to have a trophy through him away. It is time for you to throw people that want to introduce something else inside them out of your life, out of your family, out of your relationship. Throw them out. And when you throw them out, throw them inside the forgetful sea so you don't remember them again. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, it is gold they use for asphalt, not, not bitumen. And you're here. Every day you're preaching about the death and death of Christ. How can you every day talking about the death of your father? Death of your mother who died 200 years. You're talking about the great grandfather. The death of your great grandfather. The death of your, your husband who died 100 donkeys years. The death, death relationship that somebody who was in your house that, that in your life that left you is dead. You're still reviving it. You're still reviving the memories. The memories of who wounded you, the memories of who cheated you, the memories of who duped you, the memory that is why you are place, you cannot move forward because the memory you're keeping is the memory that keeps you one place. Now he said, Thy kingdom come. Am I talking, friends? Now listen to me. There are three things that make you very wealthy, that will make you wealthy. Three things you must look for. One is wisdom, it was a wisdom. Somebody talk to me wisdom. Two is information. Everybody say information. Which is knowledge. Am I talking friend? Three is understanding. Three is what understanding. You need wisdom. You need knowledge. You need what understanding. When you talk about wisdom, he said that is what is making me angry. You preach this thing wealth in the church. Diligence in the church. The unbelievers, the wise world are applying it. Everything you are teaching people about giving. You are not practicing it. The word is applying apply it, which is wisdom. They are, you are here talking about give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, say it. And the believers say, ah, so they, they, they have business mind. They have a business way of thinking. Ah, ah, are you, oh my God, why am I laboring my life? Why am I suffering? They said, if I give, it shall be given unto me. Good measure, press down, shake it to death. He said he will cause men to give to me. Say, wow, the members in the church are preaching it but the unbelievers are applying it. It's a law that will make you rich. The 
unbelievers are applying it. Show me a man that is diligent in his ways. He shall not stand before mere men. He shall sit with kings. Unbelievers say, ah? So if I'm a hard worker and I'm diligent, I'm not lazy, I'm not slothful, I will eat with kings. They start working hard. Then the believer by 9 a.m. is still sleeping. But the unbeliever, the worthy man is already on the road going to. Where are you there? I did, I'm almost getting to Ore. When did you leave the house? 5 a.m. in the morning. That man that's asking by 9 o'clock is still on the bed. Rolling and there. The, the people of the world saw it. And they said, hey. They say, ah, whatever you lay your hands upon shall prosper. Our believers, believers are preaching it. And they say, my hands are few. They are blessing people, touching human beings, touching that, touching the other one. One brother said, hey. That is true. He will start business in a small scale. And he will put his mind there. And what happens? He begins to flourish. But the believer will be in the church, believing, praying every day. Let my business flourish. Which business are you doing? The one you're doing, you are not giving your time to it. They call you to come and do this business. You say, ah, as I was coming, there was ghost, there was this one. The unbeliever wakes up earlier to beat traffic. But the believer will be sleeping waiting for traffic to clear. Wisdom is application. Everybody say wisdom is what? Application. The unbelievers, the Bible says, they are wiser in this generation. They are better than you. They are smarter than you. Smarter than you. Even in the politics, they are smarter than you. They say, ah, is it when you give offering of a cow it will bring you it's a bullish year you have they say they meet a dentist and say I heard that when you that money the emblem of money is cow now let me give every year they will come to church Thanksgiving with a big cow they come to Thanksgiving with a big cow and you believe I will come with chicken chicken does not represent anything than murmuring every Thanksgiving you are coming with chicken is coming with bull and he's dancing he's making noise he will dress himself for thanksgiving and you will dress yourself to be pity so that you'll be among those that will share thanksgiving seeds the children of this world they was the children of this world the children of this world they are wiser in their own generation employ a born again Christian to be a driver ha ah, he, he will be he, he his master will be waiting for him at the gate and they'll be shouting come you come out when he's supposed to finish working, washing the car. The unbeliever man has dressed up waiting for his master to come out, and he will even remind the master his programs. He would dress himself to look like where the master is going. You employ a believer as a cook, hey, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. A mechanic, they say, a good mechanic. When he goes to the shop, he's praying in tongues in the shop. The one that opposite him has finished praying in the house and he started working. You are praying, they are working. They are working. You tell them, come to church. They will not come to church to get information. Now, knowledge, I will say knowledge. You need wisdom. You need what? Knowledge. You need what? Comprehension, understanding. Now, it says knowledge. Knowledge is ideas. Do you read books? If you there's a friend of mine went to his house, the kind of books I see about accounting, a lot of books. I said, What is going on? He said, I read a lot of these things. He's gaining more ideas to build up his business. He's looking for a way to advertise his business. He's putting effort in so many. He does not stop on what he learned. Am I talking, friends? He's gathering knowledge every day to improve himself. He's always updating himself. Am I talking, friend? You see a musician that is a believer. He only knows one song. He can't play other things. He does not improve himself. Because he does not study to get ideas. And when he doesn't get ideas, the only one he did will escape one day. Nothing more. My friend just watched another album. You know that lady that sang? Mamuna gave one name. I was with her in Lagos. She played me her latest album. It is going to knock off the other one. They are improving every day. They are improving. They are improving. What are you?
you doing? What knowledge are you gathering? Let me tell you something. That's why I like Americans. If it's someone that really studied in America, he knows a lot of things. He don't stop in one thing. Knowledge. And Bible says, understand it because good understanding giveth favor. What do I mean by understanding? It means comprehension. Do you comprehend? Do you do you do you comprehend what they're teaching you now? Or are you agreeing with it? You know from the scripture that whosoever that paid tight, I will open the windows of heaven. Unbeliever sees it, he's paying the tight. I was in Lagos. Listen. As I entered the place, I had only my flight to get going. And somebody paid for it. So when I entered the place, I saw where we're sitting down. Immediately the speaker of the house of assembly saw me of five years. He said, Ah, pay the piranga. He said, Yes, my brother. One day, go to the shall answer about building tickets. Okay, don't worry, I'm getting business class. But there was a believer, a pastor that was wasting my time in getting my ticket. But this man bought the first ticket was 6 a.m. in the morning, business class, and he didn't send it to me on time. Because he went, he fired it to a believer to send it to me. The believer was sleeping. And only gave it to me by 8 o'clock when the flight is 6 a.m. He now said, Ah, man of God, are you at the airport? I said, Which airport? I'm waiting for the said, I said this is now. Through the I laughed. I said, Is it the believers? I know believers now. I know believers. They are waiting for the Lord to lead them. Then he bought the second ticket. Business class again. He said, You don't bought the second ticket. I left. All those who were there, who were believers, who were great staring man of God. If you know you were traveling to Lagos, you should have prepared your ticket, return and coming back again. But somebody is there that is not born, that is not a believer like you. The kind of believer you are. So a believer, nobody, not your type of believer, had already paid my bills. With excitement. Papi the unbelievers, you know that when you respect a servant of God, doors will open for you. He came into aircraft with some people that were traveling. He came into the aircraft and said, I have three visitors that must leave tonight. They will get to Lagos today and fly to America tomorrow. And we, they cannot miss their flight. I need three persons that will volunteer to come down from this aircraft. Let us go with them. Those who knew him as Papa, who knew them, Daddy, Papa, Papa, you know the people who kill us so much are those who call us Papa. They are not ready to help us. I'm, I'm telling you the rest of it. They are not ready to do anything for us. They were there speaking to us. Some were buying and casting out. But Dan Cote was in the aircraft. He just stood up. Some elders of Abidon's church was there. Dan Cote stood up and called his feet and the other person said, come, let's go down. Because the man of God cannot miss his appointment. Abidon's are lifting us. I have lifted you up. So shall you be rising. No businessman in Africa will see your back. The believers missed it. Those who sing in the church miss it. Those who pray in the church, they missed it. They missed it. Just say something. Ah! The children of this world. What you are teaching you, that is what they are practicing. They teach you, you don't want to practice it, they take it from you and they apply the knowledge. They apply, they understand this, this, the mysteries. I have a friend of mine that is full blooded, full, full blood, blooded, full blown, born again Christian in, Lake, in Abuja. He has a hotel. It's even related to me somehow. But when I come to Abuja, I say, I know, man of God, this is business we're doing, you know, you see, we're doing this business, I know, just pay, uh, I'll give you 35% discount. But another person that is a serious Catholic man who is not the type of believer that my brother is, my own type of believer are those SU 71 who are judging everything. They will even query you, ask you why you want to sleep in the hotel. They build the hotel, though. but one man came to me and said, Listen to me, anytime you are in Abuja and you pay for hotel accommodation, you will have a problem. He said, My hotel is where you'll be sleeping, free of charge, food, free, drink. One day, they, they called him and said, Listen, anything he wants to drink, if it's champagne, you'll have it. Go and buy it and give to him. 
He's an unbeliever. It's you that call him unbeliever. He's not unbeliever anything. Because the Bible made us to understand. He said that he that believes shall not be condemned. He believes I'm a man of God and I need rest. Am I talking? So he's already in heaven before many people. Before many prophets. Who will come and say, ah, these are cars in my garage. This one, this one, this one, this one. This one I'm talking about is an Ekanka man. Only Ekanka. In Abuja. He was, his cars lined up here and there. The ones you call believe, unbelievers. If I just say, hey, man of God, look at this one, this one. Anyway, I want to use, use it. You have a boy that will be driving you. The thing that we're teaching you to respect value us. You're not doing it. They are applying it and their life is rising. And you're saying, the way, that is the old way good they are doing. Call a believer to come and clean your house. There will be trouble. But a believer, unbeliever will come and clean it. There will be no trouble. You have no fight with him. I have seen it before. We gave someone a poster to do. A believer, he could say, he felt he won a contract. And inflated the price. And an unbeliever came and said, a missing the poster buy the materials make it possible to change the moon yem and nobody will say hey, i need your account i need your account i need your account but the other one will say come to my church come to my office and collect your money the other one respects the man of god the other one does not value him how dare you think that what i carry will favor you let me tell you something in this church there are many people in this church that have sent text message to. Even in our forum, it is difficult for them to say amen. Even in our own forum. If I write prayers, it is difficult for them to even say what? Amen. Very difficult. And someone that is not even come to our church at all at all. You know the story. I sent, I sent the person a text. I said, God will turn your problems into miracles. I never knew the woman was entering theater. And she said, hey, what I'm saying, I wrote it in a forum. Many of you have not even read it. Many of you didn't even comment on it. The woman, I didn't know it was entering theater. And in the night, she saw me in her dream. Well, I was giving her two packs of 50,000 naira. The person I'm telling you is the owner of Drew Hill's school. In case you think we're exaggerating. Drew Phillips School. The owner. She said she saw me. And in that dream I came and gave her 50,000 and her two packs. She's not a member of this church. She doesn't even listen to my messages. So. But just this message. She saw it. And she said no. Man of God I, I'm supposed to. Uh, no take back. I, and I said no 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 take the money. It's for your life. And she took the money. She said she has never had that kind of dream. Then she had a surgery, a delicate surgery, and she came out free. Why? He believes in the anointing. He does not see me every day. I only see her in Opera Square, where we are doing exercise. Let's What is wrong with the believers? Say the children of this world, they are wiser in this generation than you. They know this thing. They come and they hear what your teacher say. Hey, this thing, this man said is serious. You go and practice it immediately. There are four people I had revelation about. I sent them text messages. Out of them are unbelievers. They show the seed in my hand immediately. The believers did not even respond to it. They didn't even acknowledge it. Look at today. That is there you giving knowledge. They are not here. This is why Jesus says, 
not be worried because there's something Jesus knows that if you get to know it you will not worry as well he said let not your heart be troubled why because he has if you can get in look at the man the man they call Abraham he became close to God and became the richest man in Mesopotamia Abraham Solomon was watching his father David doing sacrifices he said ah this must be the thing that made my father to go to war and win all the wars he began to make sacrifices like his father the children of this world they spy into what God has prepared for you haven't you seen it happens every time a house help become a richer than the son or the daughter of somebody that is helping because the son and the daughters want it easy for them but the house help is working very hard working very hard learning things learning from his master but the son will not give to it he desire to be like his master After I preach, preach one person in this church, my get man says, Sir, I want to go and learn work. I don't want to get man again. I want to learn work. I say, I will pay your school fees. Go and learn the work. You know that you will not die a get man. You went and did agreement with them. 150,000 am I right? I said to him, Don't worry, I'll be giving you pocket money to be going to learn your work and coming back here. A man, I make a what was pande yam, pande yam, pande yam, pande f and they were calling him eh, my God, sir. from that place. He became he became a multi millionaire, died a billionaire. If you are privileged to have chef, cook, cleaner of your house, eh. Don't let their service ruin your future. Make you not to become productive and you will not know anything at all again. One day will come, none of them will be around. You will just, you just be useless to yourself. I have a chef in the house. But my boy, the gate man, began to cook food like the chef. But when the chef is going, he's looking into what he's doing. You don't know what he's doing. He's looking into it. He's like, Hi. Now that's what it means. So one day I came back with my friends. Jesus Christ. The boy brought rice. We ate it. I screamed. I called the officer. I said, Chineke, I don't want the chef to come back again, though. My chef went on the days. I said, let him not come back again. He said, What? I said, Musa is the best cook you can think of. I finished cooking. My friend, an honorable member, cooked eat his own, collected from plate. Two other friends of mine collected their own and left. The next they said, Ah, okay, see the rice high again. Nobody taught him how to write cook. He was looking at the chef. He learned. Let me tell you something. Some of you that are sitting down here, you are seeing opportunities to be skillful and gifted passing you, but you can't catch any. Look at this boy playing guitar. If this boy moved to America, do you know how much they paid him? One hour is $200 to play guitar. Do you know where the wind will carry you to tomorrow? My sister's daughter, Uche, came into Canada, had problem with his husband. They separated. He, she had no place to live in. But when she came to Canada, she identified herself with the church. She began to play drums. You know Uche now? She plays drums like America, plays bass guitar. As she was playing there, they gave her a house where she would live. From there, she started working with her iPhone. She's a manager in iPhone company in Canada. What opened him is bass guitar and drum set. That's not what he is a graduate university. Great computer engineering. But because he played bass guitar and played drums, he got a home. Got a job. He's living in his own house. He has bought a house now in Canada. Some of you can release your children to go and learn it now. They are small. They will learn that before you know they are with kids. Develop yourself. What did I say? Develop yourself. 
don't stop on what you read in university. Veer to some things. Everybody that is sitting down here, you have a bundle of potentials and they are all making that give it inside you. At times you are sick, it's not malaria. It is unused abilities in you that is making you sick. There's a way I'm not to fool in my body. I become sick. I'll start looking for who to lay hands upon. I was talking to a lady in Lagos in my brother's house. She is not an architect. She's not a structural engineer. But she knows how to build everything on earth. Because she goes to sites where the husband works. And she learned those things. See tailoring house there. See sand engineer there. You cannot go and learn how to, how to sew cloth. You can't learn how to put equipment. See camera. You can learn this camera. And become a great photographer. See some people, oh, so like an instrument that is, they are passing you things you will learn at what you have. You need to develop yourself. The children of this world, they are wiser in their own generation. May you never die without fulfilling your destiny because of lack of wisdom, lack of knowledge, and lack of understanding. Shall we all stand up? You can be free from poverty. If you can discover the wisdom of life, lift up your hands and talk to God right now. Talk to God. Ask God to give you wisdom. Solomon never asked God for money. Because he knows that money is not safe. Say, God, God said, What do you want? God showed him money. He said, I'm not, I'm not interested in money. Because one day the whole money will finish. I will not have it again. He said, House, one day beautiful house will come more than that. Give me wisdom. Give me knowledge. Give me understanding. When money finishes, I will create another money. Father, I release the spirit of wisdom. Hunger for knowledge, hunger for understanding upon every one of us that is here today. Receive the wisdom of God, receive knowledge from God, receive understanding in Jesus' holy name. I pray. And everyone say what? Amen. What I say, everyone say what? If you have your offering, come forward with your offering. this testimony praise the lord let's welcome our brother i'll go for his testimony george can you jump your hands together for him for his testimony praise the lord god of vengeance has won my battle for me god of miracles has won my battle for me God of second chance has won my battle today I'm a winner man I'm a winner man he has won my battle for me I'm a winner man I'm a winner man God of vengeance has won my battle for me. God of second chance has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man, I'm a winner man. He has won my battle for me. He entered, he took the keys, he gave me all I free. He 
I was accused of stealing where I work because they wanted to send me out for I know some secrets and wickedness they do there and they are scared of me exposing them and I came to church on counseling day Papa revealed it to me and said it is settled so after the prayers I went to the company because it has some of my belongings so I've prepared myself for violence because when it comes to evil I don't spare yeah so I wanted to go there and let everybody know but I feel scared in me I was like why should I be scared when I know that I'm going to do the right thing so I've not been this type of scared for uh, me I like violent things so I went I called my brother to come and follow me let's go there and I never knew that the enemies has planned that if I should make any step of violence they have made arrangements of police that will take me and maybe prison so I stepped in and all of a sudden I heard the word apologize from him I say, ah, ah, apologize, can me apologize for? He said again, apologize. I looked at him as he's a man of warrior. He's, uh, for him to let me tell me to apologize, I say, I became weak. I never knew that if I had speak any word that police would come and take me out. So, but before the, before I went there. He said that he has a dream. He said that he has a dream of Papa coming to his dream to pray for him. So a lot of us came here the counseling day, but Papa. When you wanted to go and cause violence there. And I also we were we planned it together. But when the man called him, he went to the man. When he met the man, the man said, asked him, What do you come for? He wanted to act exactly as we planned it. So a voice just come out from me and said, right, we came for apologizing. So the man said, eh, apologize. Like, how? How do you want to apologize? He said, we know that yes, it has happened. And the evidence is at hand. So just forgive and forget that yes, it has happened. The man doesn't do any other thing than saying, okay, this is the stolen thing. This is your own belongings, right? You can live here. That is all. So I praise God for that. I so much thank God. So God is worthy to be praised in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, there's a way God works coming. They came for counseling. And my style of counseling is that you don't talk to me. I will call you and talk to you. So they were sitting down somewhere here. Tinasa was here. And they were very far. I was talking to someone else. And I said, hey, you, come here. Come here, you came. I said, there's an accusation against you about stealing, about this and that. And they finished planning how to send you to prison and lock you up. So about God will show you mercy. I just said, God will show you mercy. No doubt. And I said, Lord, show him mercy. And he, he was, he was, it was, he was uncomfortable to know how did I get to know what was happening? Because in my counseling, it's a word of knowledge counseling. I don't just do counseling. I must hear from God. In fact, there was one boy that was sitting at the back. Even the boy came and said, come here. Are you so touch? We said yes. I said, you're into computer program? He said yes. He was shaking. I said, why are you shaking? I said, there is something that happens to you demonically. And this is your book. God has stopped you today. By the time I began to pray, the boy has gone. 
by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. A lot of things happened on the counseling day. So this young man, his own was very clear to me. Very clear. I said, look at police, look at you, look at them, they are carrying you now. But the Lord will show you mercy. And the Lord has shown him mercy. Stay in the mercy of God and keep coming to church to hear the word of God that will do more of renewal in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah, church. If you have your seat faith, please, can you come forward with your seat faith, please? Thank you. 